Hey everyone, I'm Corinne Zupko. I am an author, a professor, and I am here with my dear friend, Dorothy Mullen. And I previously spoke in one of the other videos about how I was so just amazed and touched at how Dar has been in such a place of calm and centeredness mm -hmm. facing end of life. And Dar's response to me is that this was a benefit of living an examined mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. And I stopped, my, so I stopped in my tracks and I was like, oh, I love that. That is going to stay with me forever. And so I wanted to do a video about this and we are each going to share what living an examined life means to us. So Dar, I'd love it if you lead us. Okay, there are many forms, there are many ways for each individual. Uh, there's a different um, self-expression of what it means to live in an examined life. And it could be for some people, it's going to be yoga. It could be some practicing some kind of a tradition. But for me, leading an examined life has meant mostly uh, closing gaps. I see the world as a place where there are little holes and big holes, but definitely gaps um, between, for example, how I talk and how I behave, what I aspire to and what I actually do. So, you know, I've, I've trademarked the phrase, how you feel is data. And I've been using my own emotions and my own physical body to tell me if I'm living the truth or not, because it gets really uncomfortable if you talk one way and behave in a way that's not congruent with that. So in psychological terms, right, I'm trying to be more congruent. Um, another example would be like the phrase that comes out of the 12 step programs that if I'm wrong, I promptly admit it. And again, I see that as the closing of a gap between maybe some some wrong that I have committed and making it right in order to uh, to feel not at odds and comfortable with myself again. Um, part a big part, and this has been institutionalized again in my nonprofit organization, the suppers programs has been actively practicing non judgment. I probably printed 200 no judgment zone signs. They're all over the place. I have uh, aspired to not judge or to judge less. I think it's part of the human conditioning, the condition to um, distinguish self from other. And so uh, judgment and making discernments is part of it, but I never want to go into meanness. I want to remain in kindness. And so I'm checking myself all of the time to make sure that um, I'm living the way I have aspired to live. And especially now that I've got signs plastered all over town that say no judgment zone sign here, um, I want to live according to that aspiration. It's, uh, it expresses itself in relationships. If I aspire to be kind, means I have to be kind <laughs> in my behaviors with my loved ones, even when I don't, well, actually, especially when I don't feel like doing so. So I, I can't say that if I had gotten a terminal diagnosis, it would be the right time to start <laughs> leading an examined life. Although I do have to say that if you get a terminal diagnosis, there's no place to be except the present moment. You know, all this stuff that we've done with meditation and, and so forth to become more present, it is the gift of a terminal diagnosis that you will be forced in there because like there's, there's not much time left. So that's actually another one of those things that helps move one quickly, more quickly into acceptances is knowing that the diagnosis is terminal. So, so yeah, did I cover it? It's really non-specific, but very good preparation for end of life. I really like how you talked about closing the gap with mm -hmm. those different things. And I, when I was thinking about how I would answer this question, I sort of made a list of a bunch of different ways that it means to me to live an examined life. And as I was looking at the list, I realized that the theme throughout everything is awareness and fine-tuned mindfulness, really, really, really paying attention. And so you actually just said some of the points that I wanted to make and in your framing it as closing the gap, 
uh, in my words, in thinking about this, because I just heard you say that for the first time, not knowing that we were going to be saying something very similar with honesty, with that alignment of my words and my actions being the same. Mm -hmm. You're talking about closing the gap. I'm talking about watching mindfully, really paying attention. How am I out of alignment? How can I bring myself back into alignment mm -hmm. to be that consistent, um, in that consistent, honest space? Because in that to, in my own experience comes a sense of peace. So honesty is one piece that I wanted to talk about. You mentioned also, in my words, taking responsibility, apologizing when I need to apologize, right. noticing, I'm really noticing and being being attuned to my part in situations, situations that might go well, but that might not go well at all, where maybe I unintentionally hurt somebody and taking responsibility for that and being willing to say, I'm mm -hmm. sorry and, and apologize and not try to talk myself out of something right. or manipulate a situation, but just to really be fully responsible. Right. Clean it up as you go along. Yes. So oh, it doesn't gang up until the end. I love that. Clean it up as you go along. Another piece for me is also not stuffing my feelings. So really owning my feelings. And again, this is where fine tuned awareness comes in because if I am sensing that I'm feeling a certain way, if I'm feeling sad or angry, letting myself feel that rather than trying to stuff it and say and pretend that it's not there. I feel like sometimes we get nervous that we might get stuck in an emotion if we let ourselves feel it, but the opposite is true. true right? we, we move through that right. emotion when we feel it and it gets stuck when we try to block it, when we try to hide it. That's when it sort of festers. So that's another way for me that I feel like I've been living an examined life is being authentic with my, my feelings. And I have two more things that I'll just share. One is really taking on a perspective that everything that happens in my life is an opportunity for me to grow. Mm -hmm. So rather than looking at myself as a victim of circumstance, that this situation blew up and it didn't go well and it was terrible, that what can I learn from it instead? Mm -hmm. How can I grow? How mm -hmm. can I how can I learn from this experience? So that's been a big uh, mindset, important mindset for me. And I think the final thing that I'll just say, and I mentioned this earlier, but I've had a lot of benefit of choosing to cultivate love instead of fear, really making efforts mm -hmm. and being, again, very attuned to when my thoughts start going down a fearful spiral to notice that, that fine-tuned awareness to notice that and to choose again and to really want to come back to a sense of love, a loving perspective instead. So anything else that you can think of? Or is well, you just triggered one more thought, if I may. I have a completely different relationship with the feeling guilt now that I used to have, I have come around in my dotage to loving the feeling of guilt because it makes me become congruent. It makes me close a gap. If I didn't write my mother a thank you note, all I have to do is write the thank you note and then the guilt goes away. So guilt for me has begun something that has become something that simply informs my behavior and tells me what I need to do next. And if I do that thing and the guilt goes away, then I'm thanking the guilt because it did its job and now it can go away. Mm, and if, if the bad feelings don't go away, then it wasn't guilt. It was something else. Mm. Mm, so that's really powerful, super powerful. So our takeaway, we just sort of rattled off a lot of different ways that living an examined life is meaningful to us. So think about that for yourself and maybe take one of those areas that we talked about and see mm -hmm. how you can work on it and cultivate more of it in your life. Thank you. Thank you.